live from New York, it's Monday in the afternoon. So, I'm in college now, again, and why would I hang out with friends when I could just record a goddamn deck profile? <laughs> so, I was gonna build Dominate, but then it turned out to be the same price as a Night Rose deck, so why would I build Dominate when I could just build something good, so here's Night Rose. Um, the starter's Undying Departed Grenache, because there's no other Grand Blue starter even remotely close to being worth running, because it lets you unflip two every time it dies, because Hollow's cool. So, yeah, you're running Grenache as your starter, because it's just fucking... When it's hollowed and it dies, just counter charge too. It's fucking great. Uh, it's a Night Rose deck, so you're obviously running four copies. Night Rose, who is like one, like there's another Night Rose, but like this is your ride target like 10 out of 10 times just because of her GB2. So, her GB2 is when a rear guard's put in a drop zone, you can mill three to call it back. So, what's good about this is it works with hollow, so if a card is, you know, hollowed, and it dies, you could bring it back. So if you have Grenache, hollow, dies, unflip two, GB2, bring Grenache back, hollow it again, it dies, um, unflip two more for a total of counter charge four. So, it's a good GB2, and it works really good with some G guards, you can do some sh uh, defensive shenanigans, which is always really fun. And when you stride, kind of bust one, call a card from drop with 2k. So, simple and sweet, it's a good card. You should run it at 4 if you're playing Night Rose. Next, we're running two copies of Vampire Princess of Starlight, Night Rose, who's... She's okay. Um, G, hollow, uh, GB2, when another rear guard's called... Another rear guard is called from drop, you can Soul Blast 1, and you can call a grade 1 from your drop zone in the same column as her. That GB2 is ass. Like, I don't think I've... I think I might have used it once in the entire time I've been playing this deck for like two weeks. It's bad. But when your G-Unit strides, you can counter bust one. You can mill three and call a card from drop. And if you call the card with hollow, you can give it 3k. So this is nice against Narukami because if they just... You don't lose your toolbox of your drop zone when they bind it. So it's it's like... The stride skill's nice then, but again, the other Night Rose is your main ride target. Um... Next, we're running one copy of Mighty Rogue Nightstorm, Hollow, and at the end of the uh, battle where it attacks, you can counter blast one. If Nightstorm is hollowed, you can call a card from drop zone over into a different circle, so you can't call on top of Nightstorm because Nightstorm's going to die. So, but you know, it's an, it gives you multi attack, so it's really solid, and it's one of those. It's like the Liddy clone, so on ride counter blast one, soul blast one, checked up by for a Hollow out of hand. It's it's a nice one up tech. We're running four copies of Witch Doctor of Langor Negro Lazy because it's just that fucking crucial. Hollow and it's your Glimmer Breath clone, so on call, kind of boss one, soul last one. If you have a Night Rose Vanguard, call a grade two or less that isn't lazy from drop zone. Give it two uh, and give lazy two K. And at the end of your turn, if lazy dies due to hollow, you cannot counter charge and soul charge. So, it lets you call another card, and it's just, it makes good shenanigans, and what's good about the, the Glimmer Breath skill is you don't need to hollow it, so you can call Lazy to call another card, and keep it there, so while you won't get the counter charge, soul charge, you can keep Lazy for defensive shenanigans, because there's a G-Guard that kills on your turn, there's a G-Guard that kills one of your rear guards, so you can kill Lazy, GB2, bring it back, and call something else, so Lazy's pretty good for shenanigans, and it's a good card all around. Uh, next, we are running three copies of Skeleton Cannoneer, who is hollow, as most of the cards in this deck are. Uh, and on call, you can uh, when it's called from drop zone, you can counter bust one to retire one of your opponent's rear guards. And if Cannoneer is hollowed, you can draw a card. So it's a nice, like, neg your opponent, because retiring and non retire based clans is always nice. You can draw a card, you can do more defensive shenanigans with this, like if you have the G guard that kills on your opponent's turn, you can kill this, mill three, call Cannoneer, and use Cannoneer skill to call something. Also, Cannoneer has the um, best flavor text, I think, this entire game. We got a nice little, hey there girl, how about dying, and what's wrong with catcalling somebody with uh, some nihilism and self-deprecation. 
So God bless Cannoneer, the man who's almost as dead as I am. Uh, next, we got the Witch Doctor of the Rotten Sea, Negro Rook, who is hollow, like everything. And GB1, when it attacks, it gets 2k, and if it's hollowed, it gets an additional 5k, so it's basically a 16k beater if it's hollowed, and it can it's a fucking beat stick. It's a, do I, I don't, that's all I gotta say. We're running two copies of King Serpent, who's on call from drop Soul Charge Unflip, who... Good. It's a good card because this deck actually utilizes soul and a lot of counterblast. So if you use Stride Skull to call this, you you um not you not only refund the counterblast, but you also get a soul charge. So you actually plus by calling this card. So this is a good card to have. But it gets kind of bricky because it's a AK grade two. It's only two. Four copies of Water Sprout Water Spout Gin. It's a fucking counterblast heavy deck, and it's an unflippy PG. Also, you mill stuff so you can get it in your drop zone, kind of. Four copies of Tommy the Ghosty Brothers, who is the Stride Fodder and the Night Rose Searcher. So it's a fucking four up because it's a Stride deck. You got three copies of Witch Doctor of Powdered Bone Negro Bone, who is hilarious. It's a great card. At the end of the battle that it boosted a rear guard, if you have a Night Rose Vanguard, you can counter bust one, retire the boosted unit, and call a card with Hollow from Drop Zone. So, what's nice about this is you don't need to is if you're calling a card if it's boosting a card that's already hollowed like Rook, you can kill Rook because it's already gonna die, but you can also call the copy of the card that you killed because it is in the Drop Zone. So you can kill it, then you check Drop Zone, and then you call. Uh, your card, so you can kill Rook and call Rook back, you can call Skeleton Cannoneer just to kill some stuff. It's a great card, but you only really need it at 3, because if it's retired, you can just call it back, because that's kind of Grand Blue's whole thing. Uh, two copies of Fatal Shade, who, also a pretty nice card, it's Hollow, and at uh, Soul Blast 1, and move her to the bottom of the deck. When she's retired, uh, due to the hollow ability, and if you have a Night Rose Vanguard, you pay the cost. And you can call any non-grade 1 from your drop zone. So, your normal call targets are going to be, like, Negro Lazy and Cannoneer. Because, as I said, they have the defensive shenanigans with the G-Guard. So, if you can't call them, you call her, she dies. You call one of them, you leave it there, and then you G-Guard kill it, and call it back for its defensive shenanigan. So, that's why she's nice. Also, she goes back into the deck. So, if you're, if you're like, getting close to decking out, that's nice. Uh, one copy of Bale the Ghosty. Look at, look at him. Look at his little pirate head. He's a, he's a good boy. He's a, he's a good little boy. He, um, he's, okay. He's, when he's called from drop zone, he gets, uh, 2k. And at the, when he's put into the drop zone from rear during the battle phase, if you have a Night Rose Vanguard, uh, put him to the bottom of the deck and counter charge. So, the main reason you run this is the G-Guard I keep talking about that kills cards, you call a Ghosty with its ability, so you call Ghosty, then you use Night Rose of GB2 to call on top of Bale, and because it's technically the battle phase, and Bale was on rear guard and it moved to the drop zone, you can move it to get the unflip, so it pays, it refunds the cost. Bale's, that's really Bale's main purpose, it's a, it's a Ghosty that you can call with the skill. Uh, trigger lineup, we're running... A copy of Mick the Ghostian Family, because it's limited, or it's going to be limited, I forget, so we're just only running it at 1. Uh, when it's called uh, to R from drop, if you if you hollow it, you can choose a unit, and it gets 10k. And at the um, when it's put into the drop zone from rear, so by hollow or not, you put it into the deck and you shuffle your deck, so you can't just keep spamming 10ks. Uh, you run this in tandem with Negro Lazy, because... Uh, you call Negro Lazy, you use the G-Guard to kill Lazy, then you use GB2 to uh, of Night Rose to call Lazy back, and then you use Lazy's skill to call Mick, and then since Mick is called, you give your Vanguard 10k because it's a unit and not rear guard, so you can have your Night Rose Vanguard be a 21k base on your opponent's turn, so it's just defensive shenanigans. That's why this card's being limited, because it's just really good. We're running one copy of Graham the Ghosty because it's a card that freely moves itself into the soul. You use soul a lot, and that's kind of why you run it. And, but it gives 3k, which can come in handy sometimes. 
Uh, next, we are running four copies of Bernard the Ghosty. Um, when you go into the G-Flip G-Guard, you can drop and draw a grade one. You can drop a grade one to draw a card. It's a heal with a skill. You rarely ever use it, but you might as well. It gets you some cards and you drop some that you might want. They're like Bale. Uh, four copies of the Night Rose Crit Rampage Shade. You call stuff from drop zone. You move Shade into the soul. Your soul blast it. You can call it with the skill and just keep recycling it. It's Because of the deck it's in, it's, it's basically objectively the best um, GB2 crit. So you're running at fucking four. Also, soul is fun. Uh, four copies of Rough Seas Banshee. It's a Psychic Bird clone. Very few clans have this, and it's the best of those crits, so you've got to run it. And it fills up the soul, and again, you can call it from jobs and move it into the soul, blast it with a skill, call it back, move it into the soul, get a plus. Also, this is a good art in Stripler. And lastly, two copies of Night Spirit. You're running ten crits, because crits win games, you gotta kill people. Because that's the point of the game, you just gotta win. You, gotta, you, you don't run draws in this deck because you don't want to fucking deck out. Like, please be good. Please don't run draws in Night Rose, for the love of God. Uh, Gia Zone, we got four copies of Tempest calling Pirate King Gauche, who is on stride, counter blast one, soul blast one, flip over a copy of itself. You can soul blast as many cards. You can soul blast up to five cards. And for each card... You can soul bust five outside of the cost, so you soul bust in total. You can soul bust up to six in total. And for each card you blast outside of cost, you can call a card from your drop zone. And each card you call gets 1k for each face of G unit you have. So if you fill up the soul really early with like Rough Seas Banshee and that one gram, you can mass call on first stride, which is what makes this card really good. And again, if you have like three Rough Seas Banshees in the soul, you blast those Banshees, you call those Banshees, move them into the soul to draw three cards. So, Ghost is a really good card. You got you run it at four. It's like it's almost always the first stride. Next, we have four copies of the latest triple R for the deck, Diablist of Corpse Negro Songer. At the end of the battle that it attacked, counterblast one, persona flip, discard a card, check top four, put one of the top four to drop zone, shuffle your deck. You can call a card, any card from drop zone, not necessarily the card you milled. And uh, for each face-up unit, the card you call gets 5k. So if it's late in the game, you can turn a Negro Rook into a disgustingly beefy beater. I think it hit 83k at some point thanks to this guy. So it's a, it's a good card. It's the best finisher, like, objective finisher that Grand Blue has. Uh, next, we got one copy of Pirate King of Redemption, Dragget, who... It's okay. You don't use it a whole lot. You don't really don't use it because it's just like retiring. It's kind of boss to discard a card. Um, for every rear guard you have, you can call a card from drop zone. And for each card with the hollow ability you call, your opponent retires one. And if your opponent doesn't have a field, you draw a card. So it's retiring in a non retire based deck, which is always nice to have. You can get rid of some annoying stuff like. The, um, the Mick the Ghost you play, will you give your Vanguard 10k? If you do that, and you're playing against Blasters, your opponent might not want to use Flogals, just because your opponent's, like, you have a high number, so they wouldn't want to, like, waste the Flogal, so you can wipe out their Flogals if they're still there for whatever reason. If you're playing against Neo Nectar, Board Wipe's always hurting. So, yeah, I don't need to explain to you why a Board Wipe is good. Uh, one copy of the Ghosty Great King, Obadiah. It's, you kind of use it if you don't really have counterblast to use, and it's deck thinning. Uh, when it's placed on van, search your deck for three cards, put them to drop zone, and if you if you sent two hollows with this ability, you can call a normal ghosty from drop zone. So you can call Tommy, you can call Bale, because Bale's a nice retire target for Bone, because you can get the unflip to refund it. Yeah, and if you, real, if you really need important cards, if you're just not seeing like your combo pieces by drive checks and drawing this is how you send them like you can send king serpent negro lazy and cannoneer and you're basically good to go one copy of the gb8 uh unfading ship immortal galleon it's okay it's not okay it's like one of the i think the like the one of the five worst um gb8s that we got it's not as bad as the mega colony or link joker one or the pale moon one but like this one's kind of bad 
It's when you stride into it, you choose five cards from drop zone, call them, they each get 10k, and at the end of the turn, they die. Y you're beating people to death, but like with numbers that. numbers smaller than Neo Nectar, and it's GB8, so. It's, it's okay. You run it because it's a GB8. It's a stride based deck, so you are, in fact, running Seabreeze. No other words needed. Uh, onto the G-Guards. The one G-Guard I keep fucking mentioning in this damn video is the Great Witch Doctor of Banquet's Negro Lily. So when you guard with her, you kind of must one, choose any of your rear guards and kill it. And when you do, you can call a normal ghosty from drop zone, and your this card gets 10 shield. You don't need to call a ghosty for her to get the shield, you just call a ghosty to call the ghosty. So... As I said, you kill a card to give her the 10k and the stat, the, give her the 10k and the, get the ghosty, and then you use Night Rose's GB2 to call the card that you kill and use its ability on call. Like, you can use, uh, you can use Skeleton Cannoneer to kill off a Grozne against the Luard. You can kill, use it to kill off a Flow Goal because Blaster Blade will probably have a resist thanks to Gansalot. But if they don't have Gansalot, you can kill the Blaster Blade that they gave Twin Drive with, uh, from Alfred, so... Yeah, it's a good G-Guard, you run into two. One copy of the G-Flip G-Guard, uh, Diabolist of Solicitation, Negro Nora. So when you guard with her, you soul must one, Persona Flip. You choose two cards from drop zone and call them to rear. Uh, it's a G-Flip G-Guard, that's kind of why you run it. The soul blast cost is kind of annoying, especially since Bernard doesn't go into the soul. So you don't really use it a whole lot, but like if you're just, if you're like... Her only her away from GB8 and your opponent's at 5 damage and you want to beat them to death with Galleon, that's why you use Nora. And then the Eclipse Dragon Hulk, Deep Corpse Dragon, who's I think one of my favorite names in this game. Uh, on guard, mill 2 5k shield. It's uh, the Fighters Collection 3G guarded symbol. Uh, that's my Thick Rose deck. The only decks that matter to me are Waifu. This one's meta, so it's important. It's more important to me, but it, I'm not going to play a deck unless it has a waifu. And yes, Victor is a waifu. Victor is top tier bay. Galaxy Blau Kluger is all top tier bay. It only matters if... They, I only play decks if they thick af. So, please leave your comments down below about how bad this deck is and how bad I am at this game. That To that one guy that keeps fucking commenting about how hot I am... Why? Why do you do this? Shoutouts to Tristan and Odin, my Hawaiian homies. Shoutouts to Richard for uploading this and giving me money. Drop a hashtag KYS Miles in the comments as per use. I love you, Jose. I uh, hate my family. I miss you all from New York. And like, comment, subscribe, and see you next time.